Hello and welcome to another episode of Armored Warfare with your host, Zar Peppers. Today, I'm going to do another installment in my series marking the start of open beta, and we're going to look into some of the different armor mechanics you're going to encounter while playing Armored Warfare, and even in other tank games as well. We're, we'll go over different types of armor and countermeasures, different ways you can improve effectiveness of your armor, and ways to help you take out targets of a variety of armor makeup, including the secret for infinite armor. Wink, wink. <laughs> Even if you've um, played games like World of Tanks and are well acquainted with how armor works in those games, there are some new armor characteristics that are unique to the modern vehicles you'll see in Armored Warfare, so I'd say it's still worth viewing. And if any of you know anything that I haven't covered in the video, please feel free to post it in the comments. Uh, I want the comments to sort of be an extension of the video, so you'll be learning even when you go down to look at the comments, if you dare, even though there haven't been that many commentators, uh, the ones who have have been very civil and intelligent and extremely helpful for me and I'm sure other players as well. So without further ado, we'll get right into things. Knowing the penetration value of your ammunition and the armor thickness of your enemy can give you a substantial advantage. True, your crosshair will also help you with this. It will turn green when you're targeting an area on the tank that can be pre penetrated, yellow if it might penetrate, and red if it will not penetrate. But I find it's also good to memorize these because you don't want to always have to have your crosshair on someone in order to figure out where you're supposed to shoot at them. Knowing exactly where you want to shoot will also help decrease the amount of time you're exposing yourself to, to enemy fire while aiming, uh, because you already know where you're going to be aiming before you even pop out from cover. Now what I've done is I've taken some footage playing four different vehicles, all with differing armor thicknesses. This should give you a general idea of how you're going to play a vehicle differently depending on the thickness of its armor. It'll also give you a, an idea of how much of beating these things can take. So we'll go on to number one, which is going to be the Leopard one. Now the design philosophy behind the Leopard was they, the ger they thought well, any round can penetrate any tank these days, so why don't we just forget about the armor and focus on making a tank that's really fast. So that's what you have here. You see me rushing forward to get to this rock to use as cover. That's something you're going to have to do a lot in the Leopard. It's not a tank that can go out and bounce a bunch of incoming fire all while firing volleys back at them. I'm going to keep the armor statistics of the vehicle up for these so you can just sort of drill it into your brain while we do this. Now what we've done here is speed it into the cap area and now we're just taking some sniping shots where we're nice and safe over here. With only 60 and 70 millimeters of front armor, even those 20 millimeter rounds can do damage to me if they're firing at me from zero degrees. If I'm angled, they'll probably bounce. But now we've got an enemy tank coming and he fires a shot, does damage to me. My armor has no chance of stopping it. So rather than engaging him head on, hoping to mount shots and stuff, I'm going to use the maneuverability and the speed of the leopard to try and go around and surprise him from the rear. Now we can come in here. He has turned around, but he does seem to be confused. We get a hit into his side. Checking around us, always looking at situational awareness. Now, after that, I noticed that on the map I was getting myself surrounded, so I'm going to use the strength of the leopard again. I'm going to use its speed to get us out of here so we can get ourselves to another part of the map where we can support our teammates more effectively. And that's the key. This thing doesn't have very good armor, but mobility is its greatest strength. Alright, now we're going to hop into the Object 155, which has substantially greater armor than the Leopard 1 and you're going to see quite a different play style with this tank than you did with the Leopard. We've got some tanks over there, we're going to turn around, give us a duck down a tree for a bit of cover, make sure we're on an angle, and just start firing. So now we have some return fire, some damage to modules, tracks, but 
nothing that has actually damaged my tank its overall HP yet. And we have quite a few people. That one penetrated. But as you can see, you can really you can go out in the open for a reasonable amount of time and take a reasonable amount of shots before you start taking serious damage in a tank like this. And if you study the varying armor thicknesses on the different tanks and the various different penetration values of the different types of ammunition, then you can get a reasonably good sense of what tanks are going to be a threat to you and what tanks you can just sit there and they can take pot that sh shots at you all day in. But since we're talking about armor thickness now, it's probably a good time to mention some stuff about angling your armor as it's one of the most important skills you can have in this game. If you have ever played any tank game before, you will no doubt be well acquainted with angling your armor. But for those of you who are new to this, angling your armor is a simple and effective way of getting better armor protection by merely turning your vehicle a certain way. Now it isn't always just a case of putting your tank on an angle and now you'll be able to take anything that's thrown at you. It's a balancing act most of the time because Angling your front armor can sometimes expose your weaker armor on the side. Usually you'll want to make sure that your side armor is on a greater angle than the front armor so you have better armor protection where it, you need it. And don't forget, just because you're at a favorable angle to one person doesn't mean that there isn't another enemy somewhere else who has a perfect zero degree shot at you. So sometimes you're going to have to consider what angle you're giving to multiple targets. Then you have to sort of consider things like how big is each of their guns, what ammo are they using, what should I have the greater angle towards, which target should I take out first, and so on. So angling your armor works, but why does it work? Well, let me demonstrate with this extremely crude MS Paint animation. Here we have our armored plate. And here we have our projectile at a zero degree angle. So let's see what happens as it makes its way towards the armor. Penetration. Now we have a new projectile that's going to be coming in from an angle. Let's see what happens. Alright, so it bounced. Why did it bounce? Well, to figure that out, let's put in the trajectory that projectile would have had to have taken to penetrate that armor. On top we have the no angle shot and that's the amount of armor the projectile would have had to pass through to penetrate the vehicle. 27 millimeters, as you can see. On the bottom we have the angled shot which is 38 millimeters. So angling your armor does quite literally give you more armor. The first example we're going to give you for cover is soft cover. If you're in an open area you can get soft cover by knocking down a tree like this and hiding behind it. Although sitting in it like this usually doesn't work very well, it's usually best to be behind it and then let teammates in front of you spot and then you can shoot through it while being relatively safe. Now we're going to move up and see if we can use a bit more practical use of this. Not really much use, but as you can see in the bottom left hand corner you can see my little t tank there. Around it is a number of, it's a circle that sort of separated into a number of different rectangles. Some of them are light gray and some of them are dark gray. The areas of dark gray are areas where you are not covered from and the light gray is where you have cover from. You can see that rock beside me right now and that correlates with the cover that's shown in the heads up display. Which is a handy little thing, I really like that one. The fence that I'm coming up here is another example of soft cover. It will prevent the enemy from spotting me if there's an enemy on the other side of it. However, if somebody else on the enemy team is spotting me and he's there, he'll be able to see me through the fence. And if he's using armor piercing rounds, he'll be able to effectively damage my tank. Now, one thing I see a lot of, I assume, new people doing is they get into an engagement and they fire their first shot and then they just stay there. It's not really the greatest idea. You always want to be looking for cover in between while you're reloading. During a match I always try and move from cover to cover. That way if anything unexpected happens then I have a place that I can sort of hunker down until I can figure out a plan of what I'm going to do next. Now we're coming up behind this 
AMX. Then we're back in the, into cover like we should be. But of course he's already dead because I have a bunch of teammates over there. Always be on the lookout for good hull down positions. This is a position that will something an object that will cover the hull of your tank and only expose the turret. This way you can fire and the turret, the front of your turret, is generally the most well armored section of your tank. Now unfortunately I don't really have any tanks that have reactive armor at the moment. I still haven't worked my way back up there since open beta began, but I can tell you about them. Uh, you'll start to see reactive armor around tier 7 or 8. A few vehicles that have it are the Ramka and the T90 at the moment. They usually look like a bunch of scales on the surface of the tank, although some are less pronounced than others. They operate by using a shape charge to destroy or slow down the projectile before it hits your vehicle, as I will now demonstrate in another animation from MS Paint Studios. So here we have the armor, the reactive armor modules, and the projectile. The projectile will come in, and then when it gets to this point, the shape charge will detonate, destroying or slowing down the round to a point where it will no longer penetrate the vehicle. The only downside is, once that one's been used, it cannot be used again, and you're vulnerable to shots firing at that spot. The last of the two things you need to know about is composite armor. It was developed specifically to de defeat heat ammunition. It consists of two steel plates with a material sandwiched in between. Ceramics could be one of these special materials, but anything that can resist extremely high temperatures may be used. A few vehicles that have such armor are the Ramka, again, the Challengers, and the Abrams. These last few things aren't anything you have to worry about yet, but they will be introduced in the future. When we see the crewless turrets like the T-14 and the PL-1 come into play, the key will be getting shots on the hull of the vehicle, because shots to the turret will do less damage than it otherwise would on a tank with a manned turret. It's still unclear exactly how much less damage it will do, but that will be a factor that you'll have to take into consideration. Then we have stuff like this, the PL-01, the Polish stealth tank. Now, I have no idea how the stealth characteristic is going to come into play in Armored Warfare. I assume it's going to have a super good camo rating. Um, in real life, it is covered in these temperature control wafers that can mask its signature from various infrared and electromagnetic based sensors. Alright, so that's it for today. Um, once I get to the higher tiers, I will probably make like a, a part two of this, complimentary, to show you and practice the other types of, you know, reactive armor and stealth and the turretless tanks and that kind of thing. But for now, uh, good night. Uh, one other thing though, uh, over the next month I'm going to be moving, so I'm not sure how regular we're going to be able to keep the upload schedule but I will keep trying to upload videos as much as I can and then a month from now when I'm in my new place I can make tons and tons and tons of videos all I want so until then good night <laughs>